start streaming. All right, today I'm going to do something that I generally don't do, which is try to find a short circuit using the infrared FLIR cam. So we've, we've had one of these. These are the cheap ones. This is the FLIR one, and it's on the old iPhone 5. And I wanted to just show you guys um, what this can do compared to other methods of, um, of detecting shorts using a heat detection method. So we're going to compare the FLIR cam to freeze spray, which is the method that we do generally use, versus my favorite method, which is your good old fashioned face, always available free and also pretty effective. So. The board that we're working on today, this is a 6S. This is a 6S that I believe has a short circuit. And I will tell you why I think it has a short circuit because when I connect it to DC power supply, so I've connected it using the iPad Rehab Power Squid. It's connected up here to DC power supply. We'll plug that in on both sides. So we're sending that battery voltage into the battery connector and now it's in the phone and it is drawing zero uh, amps of current, which is normal for a phone, so it doesn't have a short on the battery or the main power rail. But when I plug it in and prompt it to boot, so I'm going to prompt it to boot, I'm going to prompt it to start opening up all of those lines and sending voltages down all of the, the baby power lines. I'm going to prompt it to boot, prompt, prompt, prompt. And I can see over here on my DC power supply, this says 0.76. So that is almost one amp. That is far too high. That's not a normal boot signature. That's not normal current consumption. Going from zero to 0.7 and hanging out at 0.7 means that something is up. This board has a short circuit. All right, so let's turn that back off. <coughs> Still getting over my cold. And we can expect a short like that to draw some uh, to, to generate some heat so we can try to figure out where is the short circuit using heat. Uh, first, we can look at the board and there's no <coughs> there's no visible signs of bad caps or corrosion. It's not a water damaged board. So whatever happened to this 6S, I don't know, but it does not have water damage. So we're looking for what, what line is short. We don't know. And then once we figure out the line, who's the bad guy and see if we can we can figure that out um let's see uh let's see i'm looking i've got a new little chat monitor here but i'm it's too like tiny for me to for me to see it put your ball skin on it short found <coughs> um i would do that my ball skin is still healing from the last time all right, so let's look at what this is right now. So this is an app that is that that you install with this FLIR infrared camera. Now the infrared camera works by um, it kind of ha it has its own infrared camera, and then it has the main camera, and it and it overlays an image of the infrared the infrared information signature with the actual line image that it's seeing through the main camera. And that overlay isn't 100%. It's a little bit of a mismatch. So here is our board down here. And we can see it. It doesn't really feel, it feels pretty much room temperature right now. So let's kind of lay that out and look at it. Now I've set this up to be um, black and white with the hottest spot showing up here in red. So I can try other signatures as well. These are just sort of post-processing of the information that this app does. So let's leave it on this one, which is called show me the hottest spot. So right now the hottest spot in this phone, and it has, it, it has a little telling me 57 degrees Fahrenheit, 58 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about, eh, I think it's a little bit warmer in here. And if it had to say there's a hot spot, it looks like, you know, maybe, maybe down here close to the battery connector. Look, you can see what my fingers look like on that image. All right, let's see if we can get this so that you guys can, can really see it. Okay. Um, EEV blog 
demoed a FLIR that actually worked very well for pinpointing heat on PCBs, super expensive. I, my opinion right now, maybe I'll change it if this, if this is amazing, but right now my opinion is that these aren't that useful. So let's see why. So let's go ahead and give it a try. I'm gonna fire up this board and we are gonna see what does the FLIR cam tell us is the hot spot. So we're gonna see if we can look for heat using the FLIR cam. So I'm gonna click on the DC power supply. Right now it is not drawing current, which is normal. And now I'm gonna plug it in here at the USB to prompt it to boot. And we are together gonna to watch and see what gets hot, what gets hot. All right, it's telling me that I've got a hot spot here and up here. All right, so let's turn that off. Let's disconnect USB over here. All right, so it's telling me, you know, it's hot there and it's uh, hot up there. Okay, well, let's see what, Let's see, what if I hold the board even closer and we do that again, and let's see if, if it can, now that we kind of suspect that there's gonna be kind of heat somewhere up in this section of the phone, let's see if we can get like a closer read on that. So let's let it cool down for a second and see if we can tell exactly what's hot. Now, if you look at this image, look closely at the board which is see the board here where my finger is that's the board and then see that how the heat the the floor the infrared um, image is offset a little bit it's so it's not quite an exact match so if there is a red spot here it really means that on the board it's a little bit further down all right and we also could flip this board over and see, are we looking at heat on the opposite side? All right, I'm gonna do the exact same thing again. I'm gonna turn on DC power and I'm gonna to prompt to boot and then I'm gonna pick this up so that you can see it. All right, and of course the hand camera is getting ready to, to turn off. Fantastic, okay. So I'll click that off. Let me wake this thing up again. This thing is such an annoyance, I'll tell you. Wake it up. Hello, wake up. There you go, bro. Okay, so it's saying, hey, I think that the hottest spot on this board is, is uh, right up here, right here. All right, let's flip the board over and see if it's maybe getting hot because of something on the other side. So let's do the exact same thing and check it out here on the other side. All right, so we'll let it cool down. All right, there we go. DC power. Use parallax and settings iPad rehab on an iPhone 5. I don't know about that. I, I'm sure certainly not gonna update this iPhone 5, I know that. Okay, so on the back of the board, it is clearly showing heat on the PMIC. That's this chip right here. All right, let's turn that off and try again. So now we don't know. Which one is first? Does the PMIC get hot first on the, on the back of the board or does this top corner get hot first? Uh, that's gonna be, that's, that's really hard to tell. And it's hard for us to like do this again because we have to kind of wait for it to, to cool down. Let's see if we can kind of help it out. Let's blow on it. Cool down, bro. I'm tempted to stick freeze spray on it just to cool it down so that we can get a reading. Let's see, it's in the FLIR menu. I mean, you can sit here and mess with it and say, try to line that up better, but it, it doesn't line up. I mean, you can do all sorts of things. You can set it at close range instead of normal range, which I think this one is. You can, you can sit there and say, you know, hey, align this thing. Touch and drag to align images. You know, but it, it only can do so much. There, align it up. You know, okay, that's maximum aligned and it's still offset. It's, it's just a rough tool. All right, let's do this again. Hey, Christy, are you here? 
I need like I need an extra set of hands. Can you hold this for just like a second? I'm gonna have my beautiful assistant Christy. All right, our goal is to show this. So come around over here to this side. All right, can you hold this Fleur cam here? So this camera is trying to see it. Can you just kind of hold that there? Try to keep your hand away from the camera. Okay, so we're gonna okay, do I'm this. Not... Okay, that's good. Yeah. All right, so now I'm going to prompt this to boot with DC power. All right, what gets hot? Show me the heat. Show me the heat. All right, what if we flip it real quick? Well, it's hot everywhere. Where is it the hottest? Well, it's definitely not in the bottom half of the board, but we see heat at the PMIC, and it's also, it's definitely here at the PMIC, and then it also seems to be around here, and then up here by Wi-Fi. Maybe this is a Wi-Fi short. That's common in the 6S. This is heat at CPU, and something that's just kind of around here. Where is the hot spot? I don't know. All right, I will see if you guys in chat, thank you, Christy, um, have anything else you want me to do with the FLIR cam. You know, but as far as I can tell, that's about the resolution that you get with this thing. It, it kind of tells you, yeah, it's at the top half of the board and it can, t and it can tell you, you know, hey, the PMIC is getting hot, but it's really hard to, it, you, it would be really difficult if there's not like a single cap that's getting hot. It's really difficult to, to get more information than that. All right, let's see. Um, Fleur. Let's see. I use this every day, bro. Why? Uh, freeze spray it between the readings. Well, that's cheating because then if you have freeze spray, then you could just use freeze spray. I use my face daily, says Chris Long. Is that the Fleur one? Yes, it is. Uh, the board is bleeding. That's your problem. Is this three phase? Huh? All right, use alcohol instead of freeze spray. No, <laughs> I'm not going to throw something with water on the board and use, use that. It just doesn't make sense. All right, uh, Fleur cam or blur cam? Which ratio percentage you had the hottest is really the bad component? Ooh, that's a good question. So Juan is saying, how many times is the thing that makes it, that shows up the hottest, how many times or how often is that guy the cause of the short? And I would say 50% uh, of the time. All right, let's see. The one with union repair higher res than this, but I don't know if it's really a time saver. Yeah, I, I don't see the utility in these, but I constantly get asked, why don't you use infrared? This is why, this is, a, this is what infrared does. Let's imagine that that was like even more crisp and that we could, we could really, really see with a $2,000 machine, you know, oh, that's the hottest spot on the board right there. Um, you know, how, how valuable is that? All right, let's see. Put a piece of foam over the chips that you want to eliminate. The, mm, the, how do you know what you want to eliminate? How do I, do I want to eliminate the PMIC or is that the thing that's getting hot? How do I know? Highly accurate I, IR is just cost prohibitive. A lot of these times with these tools, you have to think, if I'm going to invest in a tool, it has to pay for itself by saving time, fixing boards that I wouldn't be able to fix otherwise, or offering um, uh, cost savings over, over other methods. And I don't really see what's going, the ha that happening here with the floor cam. All right, let's try floor cam one more time. Now that the board has uh, cooled down, so we are going to go back. Floor tools, close up, floor one. Let's do close up. I mean, you can take a little time-lapse video if you wanted to. Touch and drag to align the images. Wake up. Video, photo. Let's see what happens if we pick a different method here. 
blur one. Please attach your camera and turn it on. It is on, bro. Off. On. This is a lot of what I remember the few times that I have that I have used this. A whole lot of messing around to get this thing to operate. Pull and hold the handle to tune the image. Will do, boss. Tuning complete. Great. Okay. So here we go. I'm going to guess that it's the PMIC is getting hot first. But I don't know. Could be the other side of the board. Hard to tell. So let's flip this sucker. All right. So now you guys can see it. And action. DC power supply. All right. So right away, I turned it off. Right away. Let's look. Let's make that. Like, can we embiggen this? Not really. Can we get it even closer for you guys? Let's see. Can I prop it up on this? Kind of. All right. Ready? One more time. Let's look at that board. And... DC power. I don't know what that is. There's a hot spot. Is that the PMIC? It looks like it's a little bit north of that. I can clearly see the PMIC. I'm going to turn it off. I can clearly see the PMIC is right here. I'm touching it. Oh yeah, look at that. When I, I can scrub the heat. Look at that, how it's in the, in the image. You know, it's telling me PMIC is getting hot. All right, PMIC is getting hot. That is method number one, the FLIR cam. All right, now let's see what happens if we use one of the other methods that I like, which is the face method. Hey, Sharon, yeah, you want to come put your face on a board and see if it gets hot? What? <laughs> it's really good. It, I just want somebody who's not me to see if this board like has a hot spot or not. It won't burn you that bad. Oh, well, it won't burn me that bad. Great! Yay! We have a winner! All right, here comes Sharon. All right, Sharon, here, here's the deal. What we're doing here is trying to find a short circuit on the board. And one of the ways that you can find a short circuit is to look for heat. So I'm going to use freeze spray. To, you know, later, not right now. Okay. But the, the sort of the, the easy method here is to take the board, this is what I do, I'll turn it on, put current through it, and then I'll just go like this. Like, does it have, is there heat on it at all? And if so, like, how close can you, can you get just kind of going like this? Is it this side, that side? Is it at the top of the bottom? And, you know, can you, can you get to like an area of the board? Challenge accepted? All right, okay, here. So you take that, this is Sharon, iPad Rehab, screw, uh, disassembly artist. <laughs> okay. Right, so, so when is it going to get hot? All right, I'm going to hit go on, or you can hit go on DC power, and then just see, see what you can do. Yep. Okay, so now see, do you feel any heat? Nothing. Nothing? Wait, yep, right here. I would say your lip would be... Yeah, you let, totally. Not your tongue, though. I learned, I found, I learned that the hard way. No, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. All right, definitely right here. Absolutely right here. Okay, so how? let's turn it off and try again. And now let's see, like, if your job was to, you know, pinpoint, like, which dude, meaning you oh. want to know, is it that guy versus that guy versus that guy versus this guy? Wow. Like, is that possible? Or how, how like close can you get? If you now that you know like I'm it's not Where down it's there. Yeah, if you're you're like, can I You mean like can I pinpoint which square it is on yes. my face? Yes. Yes. Uh, on my yeah. face? Yeah, exactly. I mean if you look, yeah. you can let's like kind of burn it and just like look. Yeah, let's try it. Let's see what happens. All right. Do you have a couch? Because we could leave it there and see which one gets hottest, right? Yeah. Well there is a kind of idea of doing it with receipt paper. All right, go ahead. It's it's getting hot. Um Nope, it all feels the same. It all feels the same. It does. 
Do you have a sensory deficit? Well, yeah, but... Do you have one of those diseases? No. Okay. <laughs> All right. Here you go. Okay. Sorry. Hey, Christy. <laughs> no. Thanks. For, what? No? What do you mean, no? I've already done that. Oh, my God. That was just your hands. That doesn't even count. All right. Let's see. Uh... So the integrated chip that is getting hot constantly is becoming desoldered. No, nobody said that. That's definitely not true. Uh, let's see. Pure alcohol would cool efficiently with a breeze. All right. Shouldn't be using your face, says Paul Daniels. Uh, that I think he, he means me because, uh, oh, by the way, did you know that I passed out in the shower from gallbladder disease and ripped a hole in my head? Ripped totally true. Yeah, right here. Huh. In the shower? Yeah. Oh. Sh well, the floor actually did it. All right. Turtle Net says, our testicles have different skin. I didn't know. It's not technically different skin, but testicles are their whole job. If you think about it, like what's the point of having testicles anyway? Like, it doesn't seem kind of like a dumb idea. Let's take the important things for generating the, you know, the new generation, the entire purpose of our species, and let's stick them on the outside of the body. They're there because of temperature regulation. So they're really, really good at sensing temperature, as you should know, I believe. All right, Chrissy, come on. So hard to find. Uh, quality people all right ready all right here comes a good sport christy all right we sharon has identified she's done the hard part for you she knows that there is something that's getting hot around here so your okay. job is to see like can you figure out like is it the pmic audio ic or is it like one of these is it wi-fi that sometimes gets short see if you can start yeah, start with it here those are getting hot not well not instantly all right so get prepared, and then we'll hit go and see if we can find, like, what what tiny spot gets hot first. Ready? Okay. Okay. Go. All right. Short is shortening. Do-dee-do-dee-do-dee-do. God damn it. Fucking camera. Piece of shit. All right. Christy is very exact. That's her superpower. She always follows rules, and she's very methodical. Result? None of it's that hot. None of it is that hot. All right, you people need to go to the doctor, both of you. <laughs> All right. I think it's down in this area. Okay, so Christy says that she thinks it's kind of down by the PMIC. All right, I'm going to give it a shot. All right, ready? None of it's that hot. Let's see. The whole thing feels hot. That is hot. If you can't get it working, you can, like, wire it up in a pair of gloves. Ooh, let's try the um, receipt paper method. All right, so what what can we use for like heat sensitive receipt paper? Let's just... How about our receipt paper? Yes, receipt paper. Great. Right, we're gonna get some receipt paper and see what receipt paper has to say about this. Yes. All right. Um, I like the Fleur DM two eighty four eighty five. It's expensive, but I'll do a video once I once I get it. Well, how do you know if you like it or not? Okay, a millimeter from the lips should suffice. Yes. Okay, so let's um, try the receipt paper method. So we are going to put receipt paper on here. All right, and we're going to kind of make like a rock drawing. All right. And see what gets hot on the thermal sensitive receipt paper. Where are you getting hot, bro? Not quite sure how hot receipt paper has to get to turn brown. Thermal paper for the win, let's see. What voltage is she adding to the board? Jessa is adding battery voltage and prompting the board to boot with USB. All right. Receipt paper is in effect. There's a short on vasovagal syncope, else ICD-10. All right, let's see. 
Temperature sensitive bungee skin. Why not use one of the contactless thermometers that have a laser pointer to measure the temps accurately and compare the different points? Because all of that is a fucking huge waste of time. <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I don't get. All right. But, you know, everybody has their own style. All right, that's about as much time as we want to spend here on any one short detection test. Let's see the amazing result. How do we do with, how do we do with receipt paper? Dun, 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 dun. All right, so let's look at this together. I can see the outline of the board, and if something was burning hot, I would probably be able to detect it. But this receipt paper has no brown marks. Let's just make sure it works. All right, so it does, it does, oh, here comes Christine. Hey, Christine. Are you good at uh, finding hot stuff? Whoa, look at that. All right, it looks like it, I would have done better if I had that side down, so I, th I think I'll give it a... Give it another shot just to be fair. This looks like the side that turns hot. So let's put that side on there. And shortening, shortening. Mama's little board loves shortening, shortening. Mama's little board loves shortening hot. All right. Uh, here's, here's our buddy Nivaldo. I sent a quote, but I never got back from you, says Nivaldo. He's been saying the same thing for about a year. All right. Do you think it's really all the same Nivaldo? Or I think there's like 40 different Nivaldos, and they're probably all Lewis. Huh. Lewis bought a bike today. He's super excited. Oh, guess what? I called up Lewis today and asked him for a favor, which I was totally thought he was going to say no, and he said sure, which was like, Wow. All right, feels kind of warm on my fingers, so I'm going to say that's good. And result. Da -da -da -da. Nothing. Like, seriously, nothing. All right, so that with that amount of time on thermal receipt paper, result, nothing. All right, let's, sh let's move to freeze spray. So let's sum up what we know so far. We know that the... Uh, FLIR cam showed us that the PMIC was getting hot, but we're not really sure exactly where on the PMIC. It was just kind of a red square. And we're not really sure if the PMIC was getting hot before other sides of the board. And in order to do another test, it's very laborious because we have to kind of wait for it to cool down or find a way to cool it down to, to repeat the test. So this was, to me, time consuming and low resolution. All right, let's go to the free spray method. All right, so for free spray method, we are gonna switch over to microscope view. So we're gonna switch it, switch it. Microscope view, all right, let's see. All right, so on, with the microscope view, we could kind of take a, a tour of the whole board, but let's just stick in this view where we think that there's a short somewhere around here maybe up here maybe by wi-fi but we're we're going to kind of look at pmic itself all right so let's do that one frozen tundra time yes so i don't i want to be judicious with free spray i know it's a stress to the board so i want to wait for the board to be about room temperature and it is so let's spray it down and have a little festive holiday snowfall on the board. See? Check it out. All right, Sharon, watch this. See if you can tell me now where the short is. Ready? All right, here comes some current. Oh, wow. That's quick. All right, so we'll turn that off. Okay, so where is the short? Wow. All right, so, so now we have, like, really detailed, crisp information. Let's do that again. What I want to know, not just what chip, because it's definitely that chip, which is the power management chip. I want to know which ball under that chip 
So let's do it again. All right, now let's try to, we're, I'm gonna stop the DC power supply as soon as I see heat. So go, stop. stop. All right, look at that. Now with, that's, that is precise. I mean, there's no way to argue. That is some precision. So now we know that this spot right there on the PMIC, that is what gets hot first. And we could, you know, freeze spray on the other side of the board where we also sell heat, or we could check up by Wi-Fi or any place else and see, does that get hot before or after the PMIC? We can really, really precisely localize exactly what's getting hot and really quickly. That test was instant where there's no waiting for the board. There's no, you know, finagling with the camera and no lining up images or any of that stuff. So for everybody that asks, Jessa, why do you don't, well, how come you don't use the $100 infrared thing? Because it sucks. How come you don't use the $2,000 infrared thing? Because the, the cheap free spray is incredibly effective, really effective. It has incredibly high resolution and it's very quick and it, it does have a cost, but I, I don't think that in my lifetime I'm gonna go through enough free spray cans to equal the cost of these thousand, thousand dollars of, um, <coughs> of um, short detectors, but what do I know? All right, now here's the thing. Does that mean, that, you know, what, what line is short? We still don't know. The PMIC is not a circuit, it's a chip with lots of circuits, so how do we figure out which line is short. So a lot of people will be like, PMIC gets hot, take off PMIC. We don't know that the PMIC is the cause of the short. We have to find out what line is shorted, and we still don't know. So here's how we're gonna proceed. We are going to use the little factoid that we just, that we just found, which was we saw a very specific spot of heat right here. In fact, I'm going to do that one more time so that we can kind of put a tweezer on it and know exactly what we're talking about. All right, so here we go. All right, we're going to look right at the PMIC and plug this back in. Okay, I didn't see that ball. I was too busy reading Nivaldo's comment about one year. I don't know what you're talking about. All right. Okay, let's get that really precise. All right, I'm going to look under the microscope. There. Okay, so now we see it right here. And we could even kind of like etch the PMIC right there to kind of show that dot. Now let's look. Let's drill down on that. All right, our hot spot is kind of in the cross section between there's these two of the four kind the the four four sided caps the if we cross go down there to pretty much the top of uh, this larger cap that's our spot our spot is right here so let's find out what ball why did it do that? That really shouldn't happen. It, it should stay on microscope. You piece of crap. All right. So it should, our hotspot, our ball is right here. Okay, let's head over to ZXW and see if we can um, identify or localize that. So let's go over to ZXW and we'll click away from the microscope cam and we'll click the main front cam away as well. All right, so here we are at ZXW. So let's look at it. Let's see. Where is our spot? So it was between these caps. If we kind of come down here to, you know, probably right around here, maybe, you know, one of these guys. Let's pick, let's pick this one. All right, so this is PP1V8 Touch. That's our prime candidate. But let's look at the other candidates. PP1V8 Owl, PP1V1, which goes to the CPU, PP1V8 SD RAM, and ground. So it's, it's going to be one of these guys. So let's just take a look. Let's just guess 
hey, maybe the actual short is PP1V8 touch. So PP1V8 touch, maybe it's that, maybe that is the shorted line. And if so, maybe the short is because, well, gee, that ball is touching ground, which would be easy to do. Something made it touch ground under there or internal to the chip here. Maybe that's the cause of the short. Or maybe the cause of the short, if that line is shorted, is elsewhere. So let's find out first, is that line shorted, yes or no? If not, we'll pick one of the other balls and we're gonna try to figure out what is our shorted line. So where does PP1V8 touch go? Let's see. I see that it has a couple of spots over here. All right, a couple of spots over here. Now this area did not get hot. Remember, we saw, hot, we saw heat over here, but not, not so much on this side. All right, so what PP1V8 goes to a cap here on the edge, a filter, another little cap into the connector. It goes to a resistor, which then takes that line over here to the other side of the connector. And there's a cap here, and then there is this chip. All right, so let's just go, let's go find this cap and ask if that line is shorted. And there's a couple of other spots as well. So let's go on a hike and see if we can find out <coughs> if that line is actually shorted or not. All right, so let's bring back the microscope cam. Microscope cam. And let's go find out if this is actually short or not. All right, now I inherited this board from... Uh, from you know some other shop and the note on it was um, what was the note the note was doesn't charge doesn't charge that was the note and so somebody has been here probing around before because I can see that that somebody for for some reason has put tweezers here and in fact, that maybe that wasn't tweezers. Maybe that was just kind of an accident here. But that, <coughs> this cap here looks damaged. So, you know, that's an interesting finding. And it looks like they have dug up backlight. This is a backlight filter and cathode filters. Now this to me is very like please bro solutions. If you were to look up backlight, it would it would tell you to check here. Um, and then they have dug up this cap here, which is on our line, and the filter that's next to it. So these are one V eight uh, for touch. So somebody has been here before, which is just kind of an interesting finding. All right, so here's our one V eight touch line cap let's ask it hey bro are you short yes or no so we're going to take a diode mode measurement and we're going to go red probe on ground and we're going to touch both sides of this cap one side reads zero 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 and the other side zero 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 all right what does that tell us that tells us that that cap is on a shorted line god damn it Piece of shit. This stupid switch just doesn't doesn't like to work. God damn it. All right, that's not going to be cool. Okay, let's go over, head over, let's turn that off anyway, and let's look back at ZXW to kind of remind ourselves. Uh, let's just promote ZXW. Let's promote you, ZXW. There you go. Um, so ZXW, we just looked here. We looked at this cap, C4215, and we found that it has low resistance to ground on both sides. That means this line is short. Why is that line short? It could be because that cap is bad, or it could be that the PMIC is bad. We don't know. Now let's look and see, um, where, was our, where was our damaged cap? What was that? Let's see, the damaged cap looks like it is um, kind of on the other side of the board and it's going to be let's see which one of these is it not the guy on the end not the guy next to it this guy looks a little bit damaged mamba and then this guy looked damaged all right here we go pp 1v8 pp 1v8 touch 
to Mamba connector. So C4126, is that on our line? What's the name of this line? PP1V8 touch to Mamba connector. So this is the Mamba connector, and this is a cap. Now if we look to see, well, wait a minute, how come, how come that didn't light up in ZXW when this, this, with this shorted cap? This is our short 1V8 touch. How come it's not lighting up over here? And so we'd have to figure out the relationship between this cap and our line. Let's look here. Here is a resistor. A resistor is an inline component. Look at that. Through this resistor, and let's look. What is the, let's look at the schematic and see if we can kind of make this make sense. All right, so here are 4125. Let's look that up on the schematic. Uh, let's see. Open. Schematics, iPhone 6S. All right, let's see if we can get a screen view to share that with you guys. Screen, all right, let's look at the schematic. Okay, so what we're interested in is, well, let's just, let's go back to the, let's start at an uh, anchor point that we, that makes most sense. Let's look up C4215. So let's look up C4215. Remember, that cap itself isn't necessarily short. The PMIC isn't necessarily short. All we've done is we are using that to tell us what line is short. So that's all we know. What we know right now is that this line, PP1V8 touch, somewhere on that line, there's an inappropriate path to ground. Maybe it's this cap, maybe it's somewhere else, but it, that line has a path to ground somewhere. So we've got this cap as a possibility. The filter itself cannot be a possibility, but this cap is a possibility. And then we can kind of research this line and continue following it around. So if I type in here and say, hey, show me the rest of PP1V8 underscore touch, we can follow it around, all right? It goes to the connector. The connector itself can't really be why something is short to ground. And then it goes over here. PP1V8 goes through this 100 kilo ohm resistor to become this other line. And there's this other cap on it, C4240. Maybe C4240 is a wire to ground and that's why this line is short to ground. Um, this little chip here has ground and our line. If this guy goes bad in a way that he becomes a wire to ground, that could be why. So those are some more candidates. Let's continue researching our line. We've already been here. All right, this PP1V8 touch, where are we? Where are we now? Let's look. Why is this not letting me scroll? My scroll wheel is not working. All right, so here it is and Let's go, for, let's find it again. All right, this chip is U2000 Antigua PMU. This is the power management chip. Aha, this is our exact ball, PP1V8 touch on ball U16. That is how we identified the heat. That's the thing that got hot. Does that mean that the short is within the PMIC? Maybe but not necessarily. All it does is tell us, or it helps us find that PP1V8 touch is short. So our short, the reason we have a short could be because of the PMIC, but maybe not. What else? All right, so here we are. Um, PP1V8 touch comes here, and there is a 100 kilo ohm resistor that separates PP1V8 touch from this line. Touch to proximity, RX, an FCAM connector, all right, and here we have PP1V8 touch to Mamba connector, so it's going here to the other connector. This is just picking up this text. All right, so now we've got PP1V8 touch going to this line and that line, but wait, no stuff. That means not present, and that is a dead, dead end. <coughs> so PP1V8 touch doesn't actually go to these lines, so therefore we can rule out that C4133, that, if it became a wire, really can't pull down this whole line. So it's not going to be them because 
these two resistors are no stuff, meaning not present, not on the board. All right, what else? Okay, here we go. PP1V8 touch. Let's look at this resistor. What's the value of this resistor? A zero ohm resistor. What's the difference between a zero ohm resistor and a wire? What's the difference between a zero ohm resistor and just a wire? Answer, not much. So therefore, PP1V8 touch is the same as PP1V8 touch to Mamba connector. So question, is C4126 on the shorted line? Yes. What about C4125? Is it on the shorted line? Yes. So could C4126 be the reason why we have a short to ground on that line? Absolutely or C4125. So we'll put those guys on our short list of possibilities. All right, where else does PP1V8 touch go? We've already been here. So C4215, that's the guy that we, that we measured first. So him, the connector, the chip, this cap. We really are building kind of a short list. This guy, this guy of caps and chips that could potentially be um, on, our, on our line. All right, okay. So now, I want you, what, I, what I want you guys to, to understand here, let's get rid of this and go back to here, and let's go back here. What I want you guys to, to recognize with this exercise is one, that the thing that gets hot is not always the cause of the short. It's just helping you figure out what line is short. So first identify the line and then figure out the dude. And when you're assessing the line, you've got to research it. ZXW is, is a great tool, but it's only a time saver. And you'll notice in ZXW that ZXW considers PP1V8 touch just PP1V8 touch. If it gets to a zero ohm resistor and continues on after that, ZXW doesn't automatically highlight that for you. If that is not a zero ohm resistor, if it's a 100 kilo ohm resistor, then that's kind of like a, an, a you know, a, a, a insulator there. It's just a stop and that your short really isn't going to be on the other side of that resistor. If it's a zero ohm resistor, it's a wire. So I want you to recognize that ZXW is not a substitute for the schematics. It's just an enhancement. It's a tool. It's a quick, it's a way to make things quick but you really want to be working from the schematics because they have a lot more detail and help you see more things. So from the schematics, we've really been able to identify the pile of things that could potentially be the cause of our short circuit. Now of those, we want to put our eyeballs on them, which we pretty much have already done. And we can see that on this board we had, God damn it. We'll have to work quickly because I'm not sure how long microscope camera is going to last. All right, so on this board, you know, we can tour around and say, all right, what's, what's the potential causes? It could be this cap because this cap is on our line. It could be uh, this cap, so through the filter. It could be here at the connector. We'll rule that out. It could be this chip here, which is on our line, and whatever one of these caps around it are on PP1V8 touch. But then, most importantly, we found that this cap here, god damn it! Most importantly, we found that this cap here, this guy, look at him. How does he look? Somebody has hit him with some kind of a tool. So this guy has been damaged. You can see that he's sort of like filleted open. He's been knocked by a technician, you know, probing around here or um, knocked by a technician uh, taken off a home button connector with a tool at some point. So right now, that guy we know is on our shorted line and he's the ugliest looking guy. Now, given this physical appearance, it may very well be that this whole PP1V8 short is, is really just kind of a, a tangential to our problem. It may be that somebody was probing around here made that short because they were troubleshooting some other problem. But right now, as it stands, this cap is our number one candidate for why do we have a short. Even though the heat was at the PMIC, this 
cap is on the shorted line that we found with a multimeter, and he's the ugliest looking dude. All right, so let's see what's going on here in, in chat. ZXW rules for this. Not, not really. All right, uh, that cam is going to get it, boy. All right. Almost guessed that capacitor's previous comment. Time to fix the microscope camera next. Yeah, seriously. He has been mechanically insulted. That capacitor has gallbladder disease. Yes, it is. And we will do what we're not going to do with my gallbladder yet, which, by the way, I did go get an ultrasound, and they said, your gallbladder is full of gallstones. Yeah. Great. Yes. And then I said, what should we do about it? And they're like, well, I don't really know. Apparently, if you get your gallbladder taken out, then you have a high chance of shitting your pants every day for the rest of your life. Doesn't sound fun. No. Do you, know, who, do you guys know anybody that has gallbladder out? Did your mom get your gall gallbladder out? Do you have your gallbladder? She hasn't had any issues. No, my, my friend hasn't had issues either. Okay, I don't know. Um, she said that she said kind of wait and see, and that yes, this is going to happen again. Um, but uh, she's like, if your gallbladder really needs to come out, it will declare itself. That's what she said. I don't know. It's so funny, the whole time I was in there, I was like, well, the internet says, well, the internet, Dr. Internet says, it was, uh, I, I bet that is, that has got to be the most annoying thing, but she's pretty cool. She, uh, she was all right. Uh, she says, do what you want to do. No. I said, how many of your patients regret having their gallbladder out? And she said, a significant number of them can't stand the diarrhea. That's what her quote was. And then she starts going on about how she man she's able to manage that um, medically uh, for, for all of them. She says, you know, none of them haven't been able to be managed with Metamucil and stuff like that. And I'm like, dude, I am so noncompliant. I'm not going to take any medicine. You know, I'm not going to do anything. I mean, you, know, you realize that all these referrals, I'm just going to throw them away. I'm not going to go to any of them. Like, I say this to her, and she just smiles and laughs, you know, but it's true, like, just be direct, you know. I'm, I'm not likely to do anything that requires, like, daily effort on medical stuff. Let's see, now that we kicked off that cap, let's see whether or not we still have a short. Let's go back and test it on our buddy. Our buddy over here, whoever he is, 4215. All right, one side ground, other side. Diode mode reading, point four five five. Point four five five. Ha ha! We found it. There we go. We found a short circuit. How did we find it? We used the superior free spray method, now available at iPad Rehab Supply Store. Get your free spray, boys and girls. Free spray. And here's the, the, here's the teaching method here that, that free spray made the PMIC get hot. The FLIR cam also noticed that the PMIC got hot, but there ain't no way in hell that the FLIR cam is even the expensive one. I can't see it having that kind of resolution. It, it, we don't care that the PMIC got hot. We want to know what line is short. And it was identifying the exact ball. The exact ball is what really helped us to see whether or not, well, let's just move this over. Let's give up on that. <coughs> it was the, the precision to be able to identify the exact ball on the, um, why does that say locked? I didn't lock that. Don't unlock. There we go. The exact ball that led us to figuring out that the actual short was on one V8 touch line. And from there, we looked around at it at ZXW, but made sure to not get trolled by the fact that ZXW doesn't show you the whole line if the line goes through a filter, which is a wire, or a zero ohm resistor, which is a wire. That means the line is going to continue on to other branches that are really all part of your line. So if you want to look at all possible candidates for who is causing the short to ground, you need to be aware of that. 
And if you look, if you work from the schematics, a lot of times it's a lot easier to see and understand your whole line and kind of form a hypothesis. Next, we looked for, hey, candidates, which one of you guys is giving us the middle finger? And we found that it was a mechanically damaged cap that was out by the home button or Mamba connector on the 6S. And that, that then made him the highest ranking candidate for the reason why we had a short to ground on that line. So kicking him off has solved the short. So here's the lesson. Was the short internal to the PMIC? No. Was the PMIC the cause of the short circuit? No. So, so back at the uh, Juan's question at the beginning, what percent of the time is the dude that gets hot the cause of the short? I'll say 50%. It's a great tool, but you have to think. You can't just say, well, you know, see hot, take off. That's not going to get you anywhere. That's just going to introduce variables to your board. All right, let's see. Um, what? I think the chat could do a remote controlled gallbladder removal. I'm not up for that, I don't think. Um, let's see. What, what, everybody's talking about gallstones. Can you ultrasonic the stones? I am going to climb in the ultrasonic machine and not have to worry about any of this gallbladder stuff. All right, let's see. Um, more gallbladder stuff. Freeze spray wins again. Yes, freeze spray for the win. Chip make hot, remove bro. All right, did you ask for a please bro solution for your gallbladder? I am going to post on a forum right away. I just, oh my gosh, going to the doctors today. I'm interested to see whether or not this phone actually has anything else wrong with it now. So let's go ahead and check whether or not we still have work to do or was that it? Was it otherwise healthy? All right, let's see. But man, I went there. My appointment was at 1110. I was still in the outside waiting room at um, 1218. Uh, yeah, I was. I was like, I, I remember like, uh, I was texting Lewis and being like, I'm leaving, I'm walking out of here. He's like, don't, don't leave. If you die, my chip sales are going to go way down. And I was like, all right, I'll stay as long as you admit that you would leave. All right, let's see. All right. Now what's up with DC power supply on this board? All right, so plug it in. Let's actually see if we can bring back our hand cam so that you guys can, can see along with me. Let's see if that will work. All right, wake up, hand camera. Wake it up. But get this. Guess what, they t guess what she told me I could try for lifestyle modification in, in my wait and see period. Close. She said, you could try a vegan diet. No, oh my God, no. <laughs> really? Yay, we got an Apple logo. Yeah, vegan diet. So then I was like, how the hell? How, I don't see how you can do a vegan diet. I, I love vegan, vegan diet. There's nothing wrong with it. I did it for 30 days years ago as a hobby, and it was super fun. But what I remember about it is a shit ton of cooking. You know, so it's like, how do you do a easy on the go vegan diet that doesn't have like any fat in it like i was you know um i asked lewis what would you do if you had to do how what would you eat today if you lived in high Falls? he's like dude i would build a burrito store that's Yay. what i would that's what i would do okay so i don't know we'll try oh uh, let's see well, it's so funny because the, the thing that's really annoying about all of it is that the low-fat diet is the diet that I'm already on, Right. you know, which sucks, you know, especially because they're, yay, I booted. Do we have touch? Yay, we even have touch. This is great. All right. Okay, there we go. Solved. Thank you. Yeah. Boom. All right. Let me check on chat and then uh, we, will, we will put that one in the done pile. All right, let's click that off. All right. Uh, please bro solution for gallbladder, frozen tundra in a can. Free spray wins again. Yes. 
Dang, I have to leave. Good luck, Jessa. Uh, zero effects says, I think if Jessa jumps on one of those vibrating exercising platforms, those stones will be gone. Good thing to try. No fatty foods. I already I already don't eat fatty foods. Here, that's the thing. It's it's uh, the one of the like risk factors that causes gallbladder disease is rapid weight loss. God damn it! You know it, it totally totally sucks. And why would it do that? Because when you're not eating fat, like when you're doing all this macros and shit, like I've been doing, and eating tons of protein, then then your gallbladder is not asked to dump, so it just concentrates and makes gallstones. God damn it. Yeah, exactly. So it sucks. All right. You know what's interesting? If you run late to a doctor appointment, they have the right to not take you and make you reschedule. But if they run late, nothing happens. Um, yeah. Charging. Oh, yeah. Let's see if this thing charges. That's a good question because it was originally not charging. That is a good question. Let's stick on the good old battery and find out. All right, so it is booting and seems to be charging. Yep, so it's pulling charging current on USB. All right. I have my doubts about the effectiveness of a low-fat diet. Suspect it probably makes things worse. <sighs> yeah, well, <laughs> everything makes things worse. <laughs> it's, it's like you can choose. Do you want to kill yourself chopping, cooking, and shopping uh, for the rest of your life? Or do you want to shit your pants for the rest of your life? <laughs> or uh, do you want to just do, do whatever and... Every six weeks or so, you'll be racked with pain and possibly uh, pass out and die on your bathroom floor. I don't think so. It's kind of like spin the spinner. Pick your, you know, whatever, whatever one you want to want to do the best. Whichever one sounds the best to you. Okay, so how many people crap their brains out? How many people crap did their you, brains did out? Your doctor said that? She didn't say crap your brains out or shit your pants constantly. She said... This was her quote. She said, um, I said, how many of your patients regret taking their gallbladder out? She said, some of them said they couldn't stand the diarrhea. That was her quote. Yeah, was it and then she it was said, and so therefore I put them on, blah, 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 you know, pharmacy, pharmacy. And I'm like, no. Um, you know, and so she's describing all of these, you know, modulating drugs and metamucil that you can that you can take if you're in the category of folks that, that are shitting their pants constantly. Right. Does your friend that had their gallbladder taken out, do you see her like suddenly standing up and running out of the room a lot? Do you yeah, notice that, that, anymore, that just... when she sits, gets up out of the chair, there's like a little brown spot ever? <laughs> Does she smell? No? <laughs> what about camping? Have you ever been camping with this friend? <laughs> no. No? Okay. How about you, Christine? No issues. No issues. Not one. Yeah, see, I would continue looking into that. Well, what she ultimately said, and I asked her, like, what about all this lifestyle modification stuff? Like, what, what can you do? And she's like, I guess you could try a vegan diet. Because, you know, they're formed from cholesterol. If so if you eat no animal products, um, you can't make more of them. I said, how many people that are like this where they've had a few of these attacks go on to have, like, never hear from it again? And she's like, none of them. And, and I'm like, why not? And she's like, usually the time it takes for a lifestyle modification, like eating vegan, to have an effect that would be measurable, you're on a crescendo path already with gallbladder disease that, that most of them will end up having an emergency gallbladder um, surgery. So she was like, you know, you can just wait for it to be an emergency. So hopefully you're in a time and a place that you can get to a doctor and that that doctor will be a quality person and that the case isn't complicated by right. infection and that they can get it out. Okay, but then at least you'll know you had to. Yeah. So there's that. I could also do that. Wait, wait to... Well, 
but no. yeah, there's that. <laughs> wait, wait to have like some dude at a campground take out my gallbladder. <laughs> All right, why are we still streaming? Okay, that is how we find a short circuit. Freeze spray for the win and the Fleur cam for the lose. Thermal paper for the lose. Face, not quite good enough. Freeze spray is where it's at for short detection using the iPad rehab method. And that is all for this one.